Hey STAT students, how you doing? Time for another video. This one is going to be on two sample t-tests and two sample t-intervals. The inference of the difference of means. So, uh, well, let's just look at an example right, right fast. Uh, pizza Barn. Pizza Barn claims that it delivers pizza faster than its competitor, House O Pizza. A local TV station decides to check to see if the claim is true by ordering pies from each of the two restaurants. The station places the orders at times of day and locations determined by a random number generator to make it as unbiased as possible. They place 12 orders from Pizza Barn and 10 from House of Pizza and record these times over here. You can see the, the uh, times for Pizza Barn, the times for House of Pizza. Um, looks like Pizza Barn goes from a minimum of 19 to a max of, uh, looks like uh, 35, a little over 35. A uh, house of pizza goes from a minimum of about 23 to a max of about 44. So perhaps Pizza Barn's claim is legitimate. Uh, we'll find out in just a second. Um, so what exactly is their claim? Their claim is that their delivery time is faster than House of Pizza's delivery time. In other words, their claim is that House of Pizza's time of delivery is going to be greater than Pizza Bar's time, uh, Pizza Barn's time of delivery. In other words, that uh, the average time for House of Pizza is going to be greater than the average time for uh, uh, Pizza Barn. And if the and that's that's what their claim is. And remember, the claim if we say we found evidence of something, that's always your alternative hypothesis. That's the thing you're trying to show evidence of. Okay. And if that's what the alternative is, then the null must be that the two means are the same, okay? And so here we, uh, we, we, we specify that mu h is going to be the average delivery time for House of Pizza, mu b is going to be the average delivery time for Pizza Bar, okay? So, uh, and here are our numbers, okay? We see that the uh, sample size for Pizza Barn is 12. The, uh, the sample mean, the sample mean, not the, not the population mean, but the sample mean for Pizza Barn is 28.5 minutes with a standard deviation of uh, 5.3. Over in House of Pizza, we have a sample size of 10, a mean, a sample mean of 34.2 minutes and uh, with a standard deviation of 6.6. .6. So just as far as these, these particular samples go, uh, yes, the claim is valid. However, these are only samples of size 12 and 10. And the folks over at House of Pizza may very well say, that's just that particular sample. You happen to grab a couple of samples where they were faster than us, uh, maybe that's just due to, I don't know, you know, variation that occurs in nature. Uh, this is exactly why we do the hypothesis test. So those are our hypotheses, and let's actually, uh, there they are, I put them up there. Let's kind of restate them a little bit, and instead of saying the null hypothesis is that mu h equals mu b, let's say the null hypothesis is that mu h minus mu b equals zero, and the alternative hypothesis is that mu h minus mu b is greater than zero. And why are we doing it that way? Well, it's probably ringing a bell with you. This is very similar to uh, when we were looking at the difference of proportions. Uh, what we're going to look at now is x bar h minus x bar b as an estimator of that. And x bar, the, that's the difference of two, well, here. There it is, okay. It's the difference of uh, two sample means. And if this guy right here is normally distributed, and this guy right here is normally distributed, then the difference is also going to be normally distributed. And the expected value of that, of that difference is going to be uh, the difference of those means. And according to the null hypothesis, that difference is going to be zero. Okay? So according to the null hypothesis, the expected value of this random variable here is zero. What's the standard deviation? Well, the standard deviation is going to be the standard deviation of a uh, house of pizza over the, the sample size, I'm sorry, that's the variance of the house of pizza over the sample size, plus the variance of pizza barn over its sample size, and take the square root of that whole thing to uh, make the standard deviation. Now, remember, the, uh, the null hypothesis simply says that the means, the population means are the same. It doesn't say anything about the standard deviation. So the standard deviations might actually be different. One might be more consistent, one might be vo more volatile. But, uh, but that's not what our null hypothesis is talking about. Now, just like before, just like when we were looking at the one sample means, we're going to say, no, but we don't know those numbers. Ah, what are we going to do? Well, that's where the standard error comes in. Okay, instead of the standard deviation, 
we use the standard error, which is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that we're going to be using the sample standard deviation instead of the uh, population standard deviation, or I guess I should say the sample variance instead of the population variance. And of course, just as before, uh, if we're using the uh, standard error instead of the uh, standard deviation, we have to use a T distribution instead of a Z distribution. So we take the difference of those sample means, we divide it by the standard error, and that gives us our T statistic. Okay, all right, so uh, we have to look at our conditions first. Okay, um, <clears throat> number one, were the samples random? Yeah, I remember from the, from the description they were quite random. They went to certain pains to make sure they were as unbiased as possible. So I'm feeling good about that. 10% uh, condition, I think it is very safe to say that uh, 10 and 12 are smaller than 10% of all the pizzas that get delivered from those restaurants. Uh, even though they're hypothetical restaurants, they still deliver more pizza than that. Uh, and then the independence of groups, yeah, we, uh, the, the way that the, the, the uh, samples were gathered they were gathered completely independently. One sample does not affect the other sample at all. Uh, and then is the normal model appropriate? Okay, now let's think about this one for a second. Uh, if you remember, the normal model is appropriate if either the population that we're drawing the sample from is, a po is, a, is normal or, uh, or if n is big enough, okay? If the sample size is big enough. And big enough, usually by 30, we're, we're very confident that it's big enough. Well, in this case, the sample sizes are 10 and 12. That's significantly smaller than 30. And, uh, and, and we know nothing about the, the population, about the population distribution. So what do we look at? We look at the sample. We look at the sample and we see, we, we ask ourselves, does this look like it was drawn from a normally distributed pop, uh, population? And so here's, uh, here's Pizza Barn's sample. Uh, here's the histogram. Looks like uh, it might be a little bit skewed, but it, it looks unimodal. But then when we, look at the, uh, when we look at the box plot, the skew is gone now. It doesn't look skewed at all. And, uh, and actually, the box plot, I think, is a better uh, uh, graph to look at to check out uh, symmetry. And then uh, this is my favorite plot, the normal probability plot. And this one, this looks nice and linear. This is the one that sells me over and tells me, yeah, yeah, this, this looks like it came from normally distributed data. And uh, now let's look at House of Pizza. Hmm, might have a little bimodal action going on here. Uh, but with a sample size of 10, uh, the, the modes, the, the, the multi-modes would go away, I'm pretty sure. Uh, my box plot looks a little less symmetric than, uh, um, uh, the, than Pizza Barn's. Now what's, what's odd here is that the histogram made it look like there might be a bit of a skew to the right. The box plot actually makes it look like there might be a little bit of a skew to the left. Huh. Uh, so maybe, we, maybe it actually is symmetric. And then when we look at our, uh, um, our normal probability plot, it's not as impressively linear as this one is, but still, I don't see any, I don't see any bowing going on here or going on there. Uh, it looks fairly linear, so I'm going to say we're good to go here. The, 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 the normal probability plots look linear enough that I think we can continue. Okay? So conditions met. Now, what do we do? We just take our numbers, we plug them in, and out spits a T statistic. So now all we have to do is grab our calculator or grab our uh, uh, table and see how weird this uh, T statistic is, how far away from zero it is. And now at this point you may be saying, hey buddy, you forgot the degrees of freedom. I don't know which T statistic I'm talking about here. I might be talking about T with two degrees of freedom or a T statistic with 500 degrees of freedom. Those are very, very different. And I would say to you, well, you're absolutely right. We do need to check out the degrees of freedom. So there's our question. What's the degrees of freedom? Fortunately for you, we have a very simple formula that we can use to calculate it. Here, it, oh my God, oh my God. There it is, there's your formula. Okay, memorize that real fast, all right? Now, don't memorize this. Uh, I, I don't have this memorized either. Uh, if I need to calculate it, I look it up, or uh, better yet, you know what I do? I just, uh, pop it in the calculator, and the calculator tells me how many degrees of freedom uh, uh, I have. I just have a little program that sets it up for me, and uh, that's what I recommend that you do too. Uh, you really don't want to have to mess with this. I also, if you'll forgive me, don't want to tell you where this came from. Uh, this is, it's proving why this is the case, 
is uh, arduous and you would get bored well before halfway through. Okay? So let's just say we're going to get it from a calculator. And so now, what does that tell us? It tells us we had already calculated the difference in our means. We'd already calculated the standard error. And so now we say we have a T, we have a, uh, a T statistic with 17.2 degrees of freedom. And that is 2.2026. What's the probability that a T statistic with uh, 2 degrees of freedom would be that big? Why, our uh, uh, calculator and tables tell us it's about 2%. Hmm, OK. Well, I hadn't told you what my alpha was yet, but let's say alpha is, I don't know, 5%, okay? Something bigger than 2%. What does that mean? It means I get to reject my null hypothesis. And I get to say, because there is only a 2% chance of getting results this extreme, assuming the null hypothesis is true, and by results this extreme, I mean getting a, a sample mean for House of Pizza that is so much bigger than the sample mean for uh, Pizza Barn. Uh, and it has to be House of Pizza is bigger because this, is, if you remember, this is a one-tailed test, not a two-tailed test. So, uh, so getting results this extreme, assuming the null hypothesis is true, I reject the null hypothesis and I say, yes, there is statistical evidence that the average delivery time for House of Pizza is greater than the average delivery time for Pizza Barn. And so we all celebrate, in, or at least the folks at Pizza Barn uh, celebrate uh, over a nice uh, pizza pie. And, uh, but then somebody says, yeah, well, how much better? Because, frankly, I prefer the pizzas at House of Pizza, and if it's only a 30-second difference, well, I'm just going to stick with them. Well, if that's the case, then I guess what we have to do is we have to calculate a confidence interval. All right? We do it the exact same way we did it before. Here's our statistic. Uh, or it's, that's, remember, that's the random variable that we have. Uh, here's our critical value, the, uh, the standard error. Um, and uh, we've already calculated the uh, difference between the, the sample means. We've already calculated the standard error. So really all we need now is the critical value. And uh, that critical value is, remember, it's going to be calculated with 17.2 degrees of freedom. And when I do that, I get 2.110. And so all I have to do is multiply these two things together to get my margin of error. And it's 5.46 approximately. So that gets me an interval between two point, between 0.24 and 11.16. And the way that I interpret that is to say, well, I'm 95% confident that the average delivery time for House of Pizza is between 0.24 and 11.16 minutes, yeah, 11.16 minutes longer than the average delivery time for Pizza Barn. Now, the person before who said, well, maybe it's only 30 seconds longer, hmm, that would be 0.5 minutes, wouldn't it? That's inside of our interval. It's kind of a wide interval between 0.24 and 11.16, uh, if only there were something we could do to make that interval a little smaller. Well, there is. Uh, what do you do if you want a smaller interval? You either decrease your confidence level, uh, so I could, we could do a 90% a confidence interval. Uh, however, that also has its problems. You're less confident now. Or you can uh, uh, go order more pizzas, okay? Uh, increase your sample size. In this particular case, there is actually one more thing that you could do, okay? At the very beginning, we could have designed our study a little different. Instead of looking at, here, here we have our original data that we gathered. And if you remember, uh, there was a, uh, uh, um, a, a sample, a random sample that was gathered for a pizza barn, and a random sample that was gathered for a house of pizza, two independent random samples. We did it that way on purpose because they have to be independent because if not, it doesn't pass our conditions for a two-sample uh, two t-test. But what if they weren't independent? What if we decided to gather data this way? We, uh, uh, we choose 10 locations, okay? Randomly choose 10 locations around town and we randomly choose 10 times that we're going to order pizza and then we use those locations and times and at location number one, and at time number one, we order pizzas from Pizza Barn and House of Pizza simultaneously, okay? And then at location number two and time number two, we order pizzas from Pizza Barn and House of Pizza, okay? So that way, each call to Pizza Barn has a corresponding call to House of Pizza. And you may be thinking to yourself, hey, we looked at, des at uh, experiment designs earlier, and this sounds a lot like a matched pairs design. And I would say, hey, Nice, uh, ni nice memory you got there. It's exactly what it is. It's a match pairs design. So, what's the uh, uh, why would somebody do a match pairs design 
uh, instead of uh, uh, your uh, completely randomized design? Well, because it's actually a little more precise. If you'll notice here, uh, we, got, we uh, got 10 pizzas from each place instead of 12 from one and 10 from another. So we actually ordered two fewer pizzas than we did over here. Uh, we have exactly the same mean and standard deviation as we had before. But this time, instead of comparing our two means, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between each pair of pizzas, each pair of delivery times. And instead of comparing these two means, once we calculate our differences, we completely ignore this stuff over here, and this becomes our data set. Okay? You'll notice there is only one sample here. So we don't, we don't do a two-sample t-test anymore. Instead, we do a, where is it, one sample t-test. Okay? Uh, with nine degrees of freedom. Why nine degrees of freedom? Because we have ten uh, we have uh, uh, 10 uh, 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 items in our sample, okay? Um, and we calculate the, uh, the t-statistic, and we get 3.3083, and y'all can do this just as easily, easily as I can. Just pop those numbers in the calculator and uh, run the test, and I see that I get a p-value of 0 0.005. If you remember before, we had a p-value of about 2%. Now we have a p-value of a half of a percent. So... We can reject this uh, with a smaller alpha. This has a, a, a sig uh, we can reject this with a 1% sig significance test. Um, and our 95% confidence interval this time is 5.9 minutes with a margin of error of 3.9 minutes. If you remember before, we had a margin of error of about 5.4. So our margin of error has gotten smaller now. So now we know that it's somewhere between 2 and 9.8 minutes. So the guy before who said, well, I kind of prefer House of Pizza's Pizza, and uh, if it's only a 30-second difference. Well, now I can say, no, it's not a 30-second difference. It's at least two minutes. At least I'm 95% confident that it's at least two minutes. And so now that guy might say, well, okay, shoot, two minutes. Wow, it's a long time to wait for pizza. I think maybe I will call for Pizza Bar from now on. All right. Uh, that's it. Okay. Next, uh, next video is going to be over chi-squared tests. But that is it for uh, uh, t-tests, two-sample t-tests, uh, uh, one-proportion tests, two-proportion tests. We're now racking up the number of tests, and we need to kind of keep, uh, uh, keep it straight in our heads. But as you can see, they all have a lot of similarities. And chi-squared tests is going to be a little bit different because chi-squared tests look at categorical data instead of uh, numerical data. But we'll get to that when we get to it. And until then, see ya.